move on over, you superfood wannabes. There's a new challenger in town ready to strut its stuff, and its name is Goldenberry. Time magazine calls it one of the new superfruits and claims that it has two grams of protein per serving, which is way above average for a fruit. It's also high in fiber, antioxidants, and vitamins. This cosmopolitan berry is found all over the world, as well as here in North America, where it's known as ground cherry. But it's not a cherry. It's a member of the large nightshade family. Although this group has some poisonous members, it includes choice edibles like tomatillos and tomatoes. If you're allergic to tomatoes, you may want to be cautious about eating this berry. Golden berries are cousins of Chinese lantern plants, which are often used in flower arrangements. The orange fruit inside the husks is edible, but be sure that the plant hasn't been sprayed. These tomotillo plants resemble golden berries, but if you compare their fruit, it's easy to see the difference. Ripe golden berries are small and yellow. Ripe tomatillos are much larger with a definite greenish tinge. Golden berries grow wild in fields and burned out areas. Each plant produces many fruits that create a tangled mess as they mature. When I decided to transplant one into my garden, I learned the hard way that these tend to self-seed, spread, and crowd out other vegetation. So they keep coming back year after year. My plants have hairy stems and serrated leaves that feel soft and velvety to the touch. There's a cultivated variety which has smooth stems and slightly larger berries. Fruit from both species ripens in autumn and has a distinctive taste. Goldenberry flowers appear in late June and aren't edible. They may be difficult to find because they're small and hang down. It's hard to see at first glance just how lovely they are. They remind me of little fiesta skirts decorated on the underside. Lift up a flower and you'll be rewarded with the sight of its dark starburst center contrasted against a soft yellow background. Although they hide among the foliage, it's worth searching out these bell-shaped beauties. The berries are the only part of this plant that's edible. They're available beginning in mid-September and can be collected well into late October if there isn't a hard frost. These fruits are protected and surrounded by a papery ribbed husk. This pale green covering turns tan as the fruit inside begins to ripen. A unique feature of this plant is that husks fall onto the ground long before the berries are ripe. There may be a few ripe ones that can be picked off the plant, but for the most part, the fruit ripens on the ground inside the husk. That means you'll have to get down on your knees and search under the plants to find them. Sometimes the husks are skeletal and you can see the ripe yellow berry inside, but often you just have to judge if the berry is ready by looking at the color of its husk. If it's dry and papery, the fruit is ripe. These might be caked with dirt, so be sure to wash them. Berries keep longer if they remain in their husks. Arrange them in a single layer and store inside at room temperature. They can last for a month this way, and the fruit may grow even sweeter over time. If the berry inside is green, don't eat it. But if it's yellow, it's okay. Since berries can be toxic, if not completely ripe, here's a comparison of unripe green fruits with ripe yellow ones. The husks aren't edible and need to be removed, which is fairly easy. Just pop the berries out. Doing this gives me a chance to take a leisurely break from my daily routine. The berries are smooth and somewhat sticky, so rinse them after they've been husked. They'll keep in the fridge for several weeks. Put any excess ones into a freezer bag or jar. 
No other preparation is necessary. Or you can dry some. Eat these versatile fruits, raw or cooked. Their seeds are tiny and soft, so they don't need to be removed. And how do they taste? Everyone will have a different description, but to me, they have a hint of pineapple mixed with citrus. Trust me, they're delightful. They can be used both as a fruit and a vegetable. Try them in salads, salsas, or pies. I combine them with local wild apples to make a golden apple crisp. Just cut up the apples, add some berries, cinnamon, and nutmeg. Then it's ready to be topped with a crust. I use oatmeal, honey, and olive oil for mine. Sometimes I make my own version of poha, a sweet Hawaiian sauce. Put the berries in a pan with a small amount of water. Add lemon juice, sweetener, and cinnamon to taste. Then simmer until the berries are soft. Cool down, then mix them into Greek yogurt or ice cream. If I can't find enough berries, I mix them with other available fall fruits, like these from black nightshade and autumn olive plants. But perhaps the best and simplest way is to just eat them fresh as a crunchy and healthy snack. They're a good way to tame those late afternoon food cravings. Is this a magical fruit? I think so. Just look at it. A golden pearl encased in a tiny lantern. A hidden treasure waiting to be discovered. Whose savory tart, sweet taste and aroma rivals that of any fruit from an exotic location. Wild, wild weeds. See you around, man. Weeds grew, man. Yeah. Hey, look there. You got some growing pains out there, man. <laughs> <laughs> We're doing on to a little weed wave.